Well, this is my 4th of July plant. I've always thought of the Eastern Prairie Fringed Orchid as a 4th of July plant because consistently over my time working for the Forest Preserve and all the records, uh, herbarium records that go back 100 years, they're always collected the first or second week of, of July. So it's just a few days after 4th of July and lo and behold, there are some blooming orchids in this preserve. At one time, probably 200 years ago, it was among the most common orchids. It's a plant of wet prairies, wet mesic prairies, and these, this type of habitat has wonderful black soil, so it was primed for agricultural use. So very early on in the 1870s, 1880s, this kind of habitat was drained so they could plow and use the soils for growing agricultural crops um, very easily. And once that happened, this orchid, which is a very conservative species, it doesn't handle disturbance well, it quickly disappeared and now it's among our rarest and because of that it's listed as a federally endangered orchid. This orchid is unique among many other species. Orchids are one of the most diverse plant families in the world. But this orchid is dependent upon an insect to pollinate it. In fact, it's a sphinx moth. Not just your ordinary tomato sphinx moth that you sometimes see in your gardens, but this one is unique. It has a tongue that's long enough, almost two or three inches long, that can reach all the way down into the flower. There's a nectar spur as part of the morphology of this flower. So when this sphinx moth hovers in front of a flower, it inserts its tongue deeply in, and in the process, it gets smashed in the head with, with pollen. And of course, it goes to another flower, and not only is the pollen on its face, um, but it also butts into the uh, pistil where the seeds are developed. So that's how the cross-pollination mechanism works. Unfortunately, because this orchid has become so rare, so has the sphinx moth. In fact, many believe it's extinct. Um, and that's where people come in now. So this very small isolated population here is in need of human, human intervention. So volunteers, staff around the 4th of July, usually when it's 95 degrees and hot and humid, we're out here exchanging the pollen between plants and cross pollinating these, these uh, orchids. And what that does is increase genetic vigor, uh, diversity. It uh, allows plants to, well, just be resilient in the light of climatic swings or climate change. We're hoping that the plant will weather those changes as well.